Okay, you punks. It's Kevin from JJ Hat Center again, uh, doing another hat video. Uh, for those of you who wonder why I do uh, some of those musical uh, reviews, you know, like sometimes you'll see a, uh, a video of mine instead of getting the usual 400 to 600 views, like uh, whatever, in you know, a few days, uh, it'll get like you know, 100 views. That's my my music stuff. Uh, Basically, um, you know, right now I'm not at work, you know, so we're one paycheck less in this household. Um, but I'm trying to, uh, you know, build something up here, supplement my income by learning how to make uh, professional demo videos, hoping that, uh, you know, I could move my way up and eventually make a little bit of money doing stuff like that for people. Um, so far, you know, I'm getting commission on people's pedals, that, you know, when they sell it through my link, uh, I get a commission, and I get the free pedals, which I get to sell, you know, so it's like a few hundred bucks there, but, uh, and the clicks, the views and stuff, you know, it's very minimal money there, but, uh, that's why I'm doing that, um, so that, uh, hopefully, you know, when I'm a little older and it's harder for me to, you know, get into work and stuff, that I could stay home, make videos, and, uh, you know, this format could potentially be a source of income, although it's not now. You know. uh, maybe one day we could build it up to one of those websites, uh, you know, with a million views. So, you know, you never know, I guess, right? Now, what are we going to talk about today? You know, I, I actually, I hit record without really having any kind of clue what I was going to talk about today. Um, you know, I had a few ideas this week, or so some stuff I wanted to talk about, and things that, I, you know, first of all, we should get, um, let's get a few of the thank yous uh, out of the way. Yeah, let's do some of those. Um, yeah, I, first of all, I just uh, rewired my whole pedal board. I don't know if you guys know what's underneath me when I'm playing this. Yeah, this is down on the floor, this kind of like mission control thing, you know. So, I was getting this weird distortion, like this fuzz. If you listen to some of my videos, you know, like when I really dig in, you know. So, I took everything apart today and rewired it. And uh, I also haven't been able to make music videos for companies in a few days. So, that's why. Uh, which is good for you because uh, eventually, this uh, I think this channel is going to be more um, hats, less music things and less comedy. I've already sort of cut the comedy out. That's kind of all on my son's channel now. So if you, you know, you like the old, uh, the silly videos I was doing in my off time with, you know, like uh, Frank the Prayer Dog and stuff. That's my son's channel now. It's called Luigi, wait, Luigi Tunnel Play Channel. So it's like Luigi and Tunnel is one word and then Play Channel. The so Luigi Tunnel Play Channel is, uh, it's his way of playing uh, is eight, and what we do is we make films together. It's kind of like what he's really motivated to do now, and it's like all he wants to do is just make films and tell stories, you know, with YouTube. So he uses his dolls and makes costumes and sets up music and does special effects. And it's weird. He's he doesn't even go to movies and he doesn't really know the genre that way, but. Um, he just knows from the videos that we make and watching videos that I've made, he copies me and he's been learning how to edit and there. it's quite extraordinary at his age. But he's in the other room now uh, doing homework all day and you know, I think the kids are having a little bit of a hard time doing uh, remote work. It's a little tough. Uh, sometimes they just sort of leave you with the work and if you don't understand it, you know, you have to have parents there or somebody to sort of show you because it almost takes, you know, it takes time to email the teacher, you know, I don't understand this and everything. So, it's weird. But he's doing all right, though. I'm stalling because I don't know what to talk about today. I'm stalling. Cause I don't know what to talk about Today
that you're probably maybe doing some of the stuff that I'm doing. All right, first of all, okay, let me show you. This here, that's a no-no. I do that sometimes. Uh, I tend to really baby like my maybe two, three, four hats that I really like. You know, like my green hats, I'll keep them in the box and you know, a couple, maybe a couple more. But the rest of them, I tend to leave them in stacks upside down like this. It's no good. You got to keep them really loosely stacked, and you should put stuff between them. Actually, um, this is a beautiful forest green uh, silk finish beaver. It can use a real good steaming. It hasn't been steamed in many, many, many months, long time. Um, that's a nice hat. Yeah. So that's a three-inch brim right there. It's like the calico three. Threes are good even down like this, kind of, you know, 70s floppy wizard style. They're good up, player style, modern. They're good, kind of standard. And they're great for big guys if you're a really, you know, fat-faced fellow. Um, I have a couple customers that are, you know, really big-shouldered, let's say, and... Um, they tend to look better in the two and a half, two and three eighth and up. Um, so here's like the Madrid and the Calico. Those are two three inch brims. Um, they might look even better on you. So if you're a really big fellow, you know, with like a, an extremely wide face, double chins or triples or quadruples, or, you know, where you lost count on the chins already. Um, I'm not that bad. I only got two, not one. I can't see them all at this angle. One, two. I don't know if this little thing is. That's like the chin muscles, right? All right, I got one double chin, so I'm, I'm doing all right. I do have a little beer belly thing, but even though I don't drink, it's more like a uh, just an out of shape dad belly kind of thing. You know? But uh, fat faces, they tend to work two and three eighths, two and a half. Uh, the three inch brim might even work better for you. So, yeah, if you're a big dude, think about that to uh, the Madrid or the Calico. Uh, I haven't done the Madrid yet, but I'm going to get to that one. The Madrid is like a Seville with a three inch brim. It's got a little bit more, just a touch more stiffness to hold that weight up. You know, it's not as stiff as a Cobra, but it's not as soft as a Seville. It's like real similar though. It's like. Just a little bit more stiffness on the brim so it doesn't fall. Um, you know, it depends on the hat. Some hats with great felt can be rolled and stuff because they're soft, you know. Other hats, you need some, most hats, I'm gonna say, you need stiffener for a three inch brim to hold itself up. You can't go too, too soft. So I'm gonna say, the Madrid is not really a stiffer hat. I think we just ordered them with the brim a little bit, uh, a little bit more stiffener sprayed on the brim. That's it. Um, if if you're a big guy, I have seen big guys go for shorter brims. You know, like two inches and stuff. So like a two inch on a real big guy is gonna look like a one and three quarters on other people, or a one and three eighths. You know, it's all relative. If you buy a two and three eighths inch, it's gonna look more like a two and a quarter, two and you know what I'm saying, two and one eighth on him. 
So it's all kind of relative. The bigger the face, the shorter the brim kind of appears on you. The big brim might be really good. Let's talk about the things you shouldn't do. Um, stacking hats is the big one because what you do is you get the wrinkles on the bands and then it gets so loose, you know, so much slack that even wetting the band won't shrink it enough. Um, the cure for wrinkles in the band generally is to wet it. You take a paper towel, a wet paper towel, you just dab it. You know, clean, it's got to be clean and new, no dye on it or colors. Just dab it on the bands. You also have another paper towel that's dry because you could get drips going down here and maybe drip up there. Use the dry paper towel just to soak up those little drips. You just touch it and the drips will just disappear. Okay, so you Soaking this band, you're soaking this band. You want to go all the way around, okay? Saturate the whole band. Don't get anything on the brim. If you do get it, mop it up with the dry paper towel. Once the whole thing is wet, the bow too, saturate the bow, everything. You want it to shrink evenly. Then, I'm going to say you don't have to do the bow, but definitely do the entire band. It's not just, uh, not just the part that's loose, okay? Do the band, you could leave the bow alone, I would say that, yeah. That yeah, probably. I mean, I feel like the bow can help a little bit because uh, it will actually, it might pull a little more, but it doesn't matter, the bow is really optional. Um, wet it, the next day it should shrink up a little when it dries, kind of like a drum skin, you wet it and it tightens up. Same effect, uh, you could put it in the sun a little bit on your, on your shelf. Um, so that that's bad. Um, stacking hats. I've got more hats stacked over here. Um, you don't do it because you, you wind up with stuff, you know, wrinkles in the actual band and even in the, uh, the felt. You can get divots and stuff, you know. Um, it's real bad. I still do it. It's just I have so many hats that I don't know what to do with it. Maybe that one I have half sweatband on this one. I pulled out the sweatband because it was too tight. Um, okay, things not to do. Leave your hat in a hot room. It's really bad. Um, it's the most common mistake that everybody makes. If your house is hot in the winter years, in the winter months, excuse me, uh, December, January, February, when you're cranking the heat, you're going to get problems. Your leather's going to shrink and the hat's going to feel tight. The only thing is if you wear the hat periodically, frequently, regularly, whatever, the, you'll keep that moisture, you know, but it's still going to shrink, just less. Now, if you don't wear the hat at all, and you just keep it in storage, each year it's shrinking more, it's shrinking more, but you're not wearing it and kind of moistening it and softening it up. It will shrink like crazy because when people bring in hats to be stretched, that's always what it is. They're in storage and they haven't worn them for years. So, um, keep your hats away from hot rooms. If it's uh, going to be hot in every room in the house, you got to figure something out. Um, you need to put a little humidifier in there and they make little sponge things. You know, like it's like a plastic thing with a wet sponge in it. Or you can just basically put it in the basement. Put it someplace with a little crack in the window or something, um, as far away from any radiator as you can, because it's going to shrink your hats and age them prematurely. So yeah, heat is real bad. Um, stacking your hats is bad. I'm guilty of it. I do it. Um, keep your hats in a box. Keep them hung up or keep them upside down on a shelf. You could wrap them in plastic and just don't tie it. Don't tie it. Don't seal it. You can wrap it if you want to, uh, you know, put the dust cover on it to keep it uh, from getting, you know, all dusty. You can do that. But just inverting them like this is fine in the closet. Stacking one, you know, on top of the other is not always bad. I mean, if you have like a heavy hat like this, a light hat like that, you know, this might be okay. But it's way better if you separate it with something. Either like a foam ring, cardboard ring between it, or just a piece of cellophane, some saran wrap, or that I'll use the top of a plastic bag, cover it in a plastic bag, use those to separate it. That plastic bag will save the band, save the felt. Any cellophane 
bag, saran wrap between the two hats will help. Um, or those dust covers that come inside your Stetson hat box when you get hats. Or when you buy a hat from us, ask us, say, can you stick a couple of extra dust covers in the uh, plastic dust covers? I need them. Or do you have a couple of uh, plastic uh, Western bags? Those are the full, bigger dust covers. Um, if we have extras, we'll get into you. Yeah, if we have extras. We, we run out of them, too, so we don't always have them. But they're free if we do have extras. All right, what else do you never do? Um, stretching your hats. Yeah, bringing your hats in for stretching. Sometimes you just have to do it because, you know, there's nothing else you can do. Stretching your hats messes your hats up in so many ways, I can't even tell you. So um, that's why what I do sometimes is rather than to stretch a hat, I'll take the sweatband out. I mean, I, some people think it's crazy, but I'd rather the hat look perfect on the outside. Nobody knows what's on the inside. I'd rather it be like that than have the hat all like, you know, looking horrible and not flat anymore because I had to stretch it. It's ridiculous. This one, I wanted to have the leather. I wanted uh, some of it, so I kept half the leather. The rest I put a sweat wick in there. You can pull out your leather and you'll get like a whole size and a half more. You know, it loosens up the hat a lot, a lot. I put in a sticking disposable sweatband and I left half my leather here. It's the back half, actually. Why did I do that? Um, I don't know. I thought maybe one day I might want that leather, you know, so I could flip it around and use that on my forehead. That's what happens. Eventually, if you sweat through this side, you might want to flip the hat around, pinch the other side, you know, with it like this. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is just take off that little bow. The bow comes off with like a stitch, and you just cut it with the razor. So, yeah, when your hat gets stained in the front, that's what you do. You flip it around and pinch the other side. Nobody cares if there's stuff in the back, you know. You could even hide it, put some kind of trimming over it or something, you know. All right, what else should you never, ever do? Um, yeah, don't stretch your hats. It really sucks. Um, ironing your hats is tough. Um, I've, what happens is it gets shiny patches and you get lines. So you got to, first of all, cover it up. If you're doing a flat brim like this, it's all about stiff enough. It's got to be stiff enough to hold its weight. Once it's, you know, feels like a board and then you're ready to go, then you could start, uh, you know, ironing or steaming. Without that stiffener, it's impossible. You'll never have a flat brim. You'll have a floppy brim. So it's all about stiffness. The other thing is when you want to get rid of the curl and stuff, you can iron, but you've got to cover it with a cloth first and use low, low heat. Otherwise, you're going to get shiny patches, burnt patches, compressed patches, and little lines from the edge of the the iron and stuff. So always put that bandana over it first or some cotton, muslin, cloth, whatever. And low heat, there's a lot of weight. Um, I never use an iron. I've never trusted it. I'd rather use lots of stiffener, steam it real hot, and then fast. I put on the cloth and a lot of weights, you know, books, a bunch of dictionaries or encyclopedias and it take my 30 pound dumbbell I put that on top or you put your television on top or something heavy you know amplifier uh, that's how you do it weight and board you know stuff like that a flat book or something but again you can make lines on it so you got to cover it with uh, some sort of like a cloth before you do that and again if your hat is soft you're never going to get it flat it's got to be hard it's the only way to get a flat burn so Stiffen it first, and after you stiffen it, then you can talk about flattening it. And then if you have a hat at home that's soft, and it's not, you know, soft, and it's not stiff, don't even bother asking about getting a flat brim, it won't work. Um, this is a, a soft hat, you know, after trying to flatten it, it doesn't really work. What you need to do is add more and more stiffening, and believe me, this might have five coats of stiffener already. Fultons are not usual. You can see this area is getting flat because there was stiffened enough. This area, look, it's softer. So it's curling. See that? It feels softer. But the areas that I stiffen more are holding the flatness. 
So it's all about how much stiffener you use. Don't try to make soft hats flat. It just, it's futile. It will never, ever work. Trying to control your brim um, is like this. The stiffer it is, the more control and snap you get. The softer it is, the more flexible you get, but less control. There is a certain waviness. It does what it wants to do. Sometimes it looks cool and decadent, like, you know, a Monte Cristo Panama looks like cloth, but you can't control it. When it's stiff, you can snap it. You've got to have some stiffener to be able to control your brim. I'm not talking about making it stiff. This hat by no means is it stiff, you know, but it's stiff enough. Okay? Without the right amount of stiffener, you can't control your brim. So here's another thing. Don't try to do do-it-yourself stuff to hats if it's too soft. Steaming a hat that's soft pretty much does nothing. Um, they do it at these, you know, Rooney Brothers shops and stuff. Uh, the kids try to steam your hat to fix it, and they have no idea. They just soften it and make it, you know. What's your, you're really steaming the stiffener, okay? It's like a plastic shell that you spray on there. You laminate it in this hard shell. And what you do with the steam is you melt that shell momentarily, okay? And as it cools, you manipulate it, you get it to the way you want, okay? And you let go. And then that hard shell dries, 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 dries again. You let go and it stays. So it's like a hard plasticky shell. You melt it, you're able to change it. Okay, now I want to flange like this. Hold it, hold it. Okay, it's the stiffener that you're steaming. You're cooling it and heating it, cooling it and heating it, melting it and letting it dry. It's all about that sizing, the stiffener. You could take your soft hat and just steam it all day trying to do this and what you're doing is you're just making it softer and getting less and less control you know as it gets worse and worse and ah why can't i steam this it's soft you know so yeah you got to add the stiffener and um that's not easy too you have to completely clean the hat you got to get every bit of dust off otherwise you're spraying in you know, all that dust forever. You have to clean it with packing tape, pat it down, even the edges, the sides, the top, the bottom. Use lots of tape rings, pat it down, brush it, brush it counterclockwise, get the felt going the right way. Okay. Uh, the underside sometimes is clockwise. The top's always counterclockwise. Once you get it nice and smooth, then you could spray. But you can't get spray on the leather. So you got to cover up the leather with either a hat jack or a big ball of tissue, you know, like a head-sized ball of tissue that comes up here. Then you spray it. You let it dry completely. You might have to do another coat, another coat, maybe three coats, maybe even four. Sometimes one does it. Depends on the felt quality, the thickness, how, how soft it was to begin with. Um, but yeah, here's another hat. Now this is a Panama. The only way it's going to get flat, to get that kind of control, you need stiffener. You can see it's even a tiny bit shiny. You can tell they probably gave it like 10 or 15 coats of spray at some point. Yeah. This is uh, the Cap Banu pad. Okay, Cotton pad. We sell them in our website. We do sell out of them fast, so a lot of times we're out there five bucks. We call it Sweat Band on jjhatcenter.com. Just sweat band. Um, I have them in just about every single one of my hats. Yeah, they all have it. This one fell out of this one because it's got a ribbon sweat band. It doesn't stick to ribbon well, but sometimes it does. But um, it'll stick to a cloth sweat band and it'll stick to a leather sweat band pretty much forever. Um, and then once it's in there, you just keep um, replacing them and the. Um, the sweat pads, yeah, I wanted to show you two hats. This one, here. Yeah. So basically what they do is they prevent you from sweating up your hats, okay? So the only way to not get sweat stains is to put a barrier there, prevention. Because once you get the stain, you can't get it out. You can cover it here with a new band. That's the idea of this band. The band is there, it's wide and it's always dark for that reason. 
makes contact with your head right here. If you notice, you don't make contact with the head up here, right? It's not there, and it's not below it either. Okay, your head is only here. That's where there's a band. So where your skin makes contact with the hat, they've got the band there for a reason. Um, to absorb perspiration, to wick it to the sides, and keep it in here so it doesn't go up there into your brim. If it's in your brim and crown, you just can't get it out. It's impossible, it won't come out. Prevention is the key, okay? Uh, prevention is the key, preserve the curve. That should be the name of my shirt. Should make some shirts, that'd be cool. Preserve the curve. So anyway, um, what do you not do with your hats? Don't stretch them, don't stack them, don't keep them in the heat. Don't do weird do-it-yourself stuff like steaming it unless it's stiff. Stiffening is going to pretty much solve almost like all the problems that most people have. Um, things like linings, you know, when they get bunched up, just people sometimes uh, they want they want to send in their hats because the lining is bunched up. Just flip up your your leather, pull out the lining completely. Steam it out if it's wrinkled, or just kind of, you know, pull it over your knee, get a nice, it's a circle, like a, a cone shape, and that's it. And put it back in, nice and neatly, smooth it out, flip this over it. You don't need any glue, any stitches, nothing. If you're iffy about that, and you're like, oh, yeah, of course, I need some stitches, I need something to keep it, okay, then get something very light, a hot glue stick, you just rub it, or... Uh, tiny bit of tape, a little tape in there, um, any kind of mild glue like a, a glue stick, a, uh, you know, like a, a, a pretty cool glue stick, kind of thing, Elmer's kind of stuff. You don't want to make a ball of glue because it'll make a hard, like, you know, a little ball pellet in there. You want to wipe if you're using glue, personally, I don't use any. Don't, the only time I do it is if the crown is falling down. And, the, the lining falls down onto a person's bald head and it bothers them, I'll glue it to the top of the crown up here so it doesn't fall down. That's when their lining is too big and it doesn't fit right or something, you know. Um, but yeah, you don't need glue. Just put them in. Most of your linings are not sewn in and they're not glued in either. If anything, they use just a glue stick and they go plant like that, you know, a glue gun. And there's just a little white dirty glue in there because it's under the uh, the lining so nobody sees it. It's a rough part of the hat. All right, that's about it. Uh, what do you not do with your hat? Um, yeah, don't do weird stuff like it. Don't put water on it. Um, use steam. Don't ever brush it when it's wet, ever. Don't steam it with the brim down. Steam it, steam it with the brim up. Don't ever steam the inside of the hat, you'll destroy the leather. Don't ever do it. You're ruining your hat if you steam this. And if you see uh, some guy at uh, one of the brother's shops or some other random shop, well, let me sterilize the inside now. Stop. Stop and shout before he gets. Because uh, you're bringing your good fur felt hat into that place that has like no leather sweatbands and no fur felt. They don't know what to do with the steamer. Okay. What you got to do basically is keep steam away from here. You touch it to there, it could ruin it in a split second. Literally, like a quarter of a second, it's gone. So, and it's not like you put conditioner and fix it, the leather shrinks up and, and dries into nothing, into powder. It turns like burnt and crispy and hard. So, do not steam the inside. If the leather's brand new and very moist, it'll take some steaming. If it's older and a little bit depleted of moisture, like instead of having 100% of its moisture, it's only got 20% or 6 or 10 or whatever, one second, half a second, and it's gone. So it's that, it's that fast. I've ruined at least three to five in my youth, you know, back 20, 25 years ago when I didn't know. I saw those vintage hats, you know, with that thing, and I was like, oh, did I do that? You know? And it's not a big deal sometimes. I was, you know, once or twice, I actually, I, I screwed people's hats. That's when I was very, I don't think it was that many times. It was probably like twice. You know, my wife and son are blown around. Okay, but uh, probably maybe twice at least, maybe three times. 
Oh boy. All right, guys. So I'm gonna take you out. Never steam the inside of your hat. Thank you.